Hey guys, you probably read the title, so this is going to be a Q&A video. I'm just going to go over some questions that I've gotten repeatedly over my videos, so I hope this helps you out if you had any questions. I've probably answered a couple hundred questions by now, and a lot of them are the same questions, so I'm hoping this video kind of clears it up for you. If you still have a question, feel free to post it below, and if somebody already knows the answer to the question, feel free to answer it for me. My time is becoming less and less available. Uh, uh, but I'll try to answer as many questions as physically possible. So moving on to question number one, can you buy the suit? Uh, no, I'm not in the business of selling anything at the moment. The suit has also become a pretty big part of my channel, so getting rid of it would not be wise on my part. I plan to use this on a lot of other videos in the future, so I'm keeping this one. Question two, can I make you a suit? The answer is no, I'm not opposed to helping other people with costumes. In fact, I would say the whole point of my channel is to help other people build costumes. My goal is to help you grow as a builder, not just to sell you something like any other online vendor. I'm not saying this applies to everybody, but for me personally, I feel like as a costume maker, you should take pride in your own work, and when you go to a convention or something and you show off your costume, you can feel proud of yourself for showing off your work. That's something that I have experienced personally, and it feels really good, a lot better than just wearing a costume like you buy at Target. I have several of those old children's costumes for Halloween in my closet, and after looking back on it, I never really loved those costumes because they were just pre-made, and I had no real input in them, so I had no real pride for them. Moving on to question number three, how did I make the suit? I get asked this question all the time, and it's very broad and pretty difficult to summarize in a couple sentences. The whole process of costume making is a very long and complicated process. You have to be a very creative person because a lot of times things don't turn out exactly the way you thought they would, and you have to improvise. I think improvising and sort of coming up with your own ideas along the way is all part of the creative process, and it's a lot of fun in my opinion. If you really, honestly, don't enjoy making costumes, you might not enjoy wearing one, as that is half of the fun, but if you really want to wear a costume, then you are more than welcome to look up some vendors online. There are definitely a lot of people that sell, like, 3D printed props and costumes out there. Uh, I am not one of those people yet. But that's all I had to say on this matter. You're obviously going to be different than I am, and that's totally fine. I'll put some links Links to other costume making channels in the description. I highly recommend checking these guys out as they were a big inspiration for me and I'm sure they can help you a lot as well. Question number four is what kind of foam do I use? It's called EVA foam. It's usually used for floor matting but it's very popular in the world of cosplay and costume making. I have a link to the foam roll that I used in the description so of course you can check that out. That's just the one on Amazon but they can be found at a other places as well. I'll be making another video in the future on the materials that I used and have used in the past, so be on the lookout for that. Question number five is how do I resize the templates to fit you? Someone posted a very helpful comment on my first video, the Clone Trooper Costume Overview. I will link that video, but check out that I pinned the comment. It's at the top. It'll help you resize it based on your height as compared to my height. As I've stated a few times in previous videos, I only have my body type to work with, so the template only was designed to fit me, but you can, of course, modify it to fit you. You'll just need to be a little bit creative. Question number six is how long did it take me to make my suit? And the answer is about five months. I went very slowly and very carefully. As you can see, it turned out pretty well, and my suit is the result of patience and a lot of time and effort. I messed up a few times and had to redo some pieces, but if I had just left it, then it would not have looked as good in my opinion, so I had to do the hard thing and redo a whole piece a few times. The helmet was one of those pieces, but you could certainly do this costume in a shorter amount of time if you focused on it purely and didn't get distracted with school or anything like that. If you really wanted it quickly, you could probably make it in a couple weeks. 
Question number seven. What is my clone trooper based off of? The armor itself is based off of the Clone Wars TV show version, as you can see behind me on my laptop. It is not the same version as the one from Episode 3. Just to give you a heads up, they are pretty different. If you want to see more differences, I highly recommend looking up reference images from both the movie or the TV show, whichever one you're trying to make. Reference images are extremely important when trying to copy something from any other game or movie. As for the color markings, it is just an original design. It is not actually from anything. I just chose this design because I thought it looked really cool and I saw some reference images from some fan art. Question 8 is where do I get my music? Nobody really asked me this, but I figured somebody might want to know. And I get all of it from the YouTube audio library. If you go to YouTube Studio on your account homepage, you'll find it. Or if you want to know more, you can just look it up. But if you're interested, there's a lot of free sound effects on there and a lot of music as well, and it's all copyright free since it's owned by YouTube. Copyright is a massive issue on YouTube, and I really don't want to get sucked into that. Question 9 is where do I get the free templates? I know half of you already know the answer to this question, but there seems to be a lot of people that are still confused about it, so I will quickly walk you through the process of downloading all of the files. The RPF is short for the Replica Prop Forum, and it is a website where I have created a page and I've uploaded the templates to that page. You do not need an account to download the templates, but you might want to make an account if if you plan to ask questions on the RPF, as there's lots of helpful people on there. So as I've stated before, go to any of my costume videos and go to the first link in the description, click on it, and it will take you to the RPF, my page specifically, and then all you have to do is scroll past all the pictures and past the YouTube video at the bottom. And when you get to the bottom of my first post, you will see the two attachment files. One is armor, one is helmet. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you just want the foam files for the armor, then download the PDF on the left. And if you want the helmet files, which are a Pepakura file, then download the helmet file on the right. I don't feel like I need to explain how to print a PDF file. So for now, I'm just going to look at the Helmet Pepakura file. So as you can see, there's a TCW Clone Phase 2, that is the helmet, and the TCW Binox, that is the binoculars that I use. Once again, I did not make either of these files. They are made by someone else who did not put their name on the file, so I can't really credit them. But to whoever made them originally, Thank you. For those of you who do not know what Pepakura is, it is a 3D object to paper conversion program, and it is free and very widely used in the costuming world. If you want to know more about it, just look up Pepakura costume making or cosplay. There's lots of videos out there already. But real quickly, I'll show you how to print from Pepakura. You can also print it to a PDF file. It's very simple, very easy. All you have to do is go up to File, and then down to Print or Print PDF, whichever one you want to do, and then print it out. You can also choose to increase or decrease the scaling of the helmet in the Pepakura software, and then print it out depending on how big your head is compared to mine. I just left the scaling exactly the same as when you open it, and that's how I made my helmet. I wanted to address a tenth question real quick, and that is, is the costume 501st approved? And the answer is no. It was never intended to be 501st approved. I knew from the beginning, over a year ago, that it was not going to be 100% accurate. I really do appreciate the love and dedication that the 501st put into their costumes, and I really hope to join them one day, but this is not a costume that is going to get you or me into the 501st, just to let you know. And that's about all the questions I had for this video. There's obviously many more questions. I'll try to get back to you on any ones that you might have. Uh, but for now, good luck with your costumes, and I'll see you in the next video.